All right, back to work, back to work. I know the weekend can't last forever, though. We're going to get back to making money here this week. End of the month, end of the month, earning season continues. And boy, I'll tell you, we get some great charts to kick off the brand new month of August. Got a pretty straightforward game plan tonight. And you know me, I'm going to give my favorite trades for tomorrow that we have a game plan to make some money on Tuesday. Before we dive in, though, and get the party going tonight, make sure you subscribe to our channel that we don't miss tomorrow night's video. And if you enjoy these videos tonight, as always, thank you you so much for tuning in if you like this stuff hit that like button for me and give me a shout out give me a holler introduce yourself down in the comment section below thank you so much for tuning in supporting the channel but enough of the intro joe these charts are not going to trade themselves where are the best trades setting up for what should be a very good day tomorrow and a great week i'm sure in our trade room boy everything's bullish right now starting off on the e-mini and the NASDAQ, I like to use the 60-minute time frame to help me plan my trades for the following day. And then later on in the video, I'm going to drill down to my faster time frame, some tick charts. Tick charts make it easier to find entry patterns, entry setups, entry signals. So we'll cover the basic fundamentals first, but later on in the video, we're going to go into a lot more detail of the specific entry tactics uh, Tactics I'll be looking for tomorrow in our trade room. Everything bullish right now, bullish on the S&P, bullish on the NASDAQ. We're basically pretty simple. We're bull markets into a trading range right now. Anytime we have a bull market into a trading range, we know there has to be a ton of buyers who would love to buy just below that trading range, right? Ranges act like magnets. And so really the kind of the game plan for tomorrow is, is wait for breakouts, right? Now in this case, this would be breakouts that fail, right? So failed breakouts, reversals back up into that trading range. Obviously that's probably the best, most desirable trades uh, here for tomorrow. Now where things get interesting is if we do start to break out going higher, right? I have two different breakout patterns I'm looking for as we go higher here, right? So buyers have plenty of opportunity for breakouts going higher. Now, you can probably already tell the same thing here, of course, is the NASDAQ, right? We've got two different breakout patterns we're tracking going higher here. Those are certainly on my radar, but you probably can tell what I'm going to say next, right? There's a lot of resistance up overhead on the S&P resistance on the NASDAQ. So what do you think? Is it possible we might see another set of failed breakouts, right? Going back down again into that trading range. We got big earnings coming tomorrow. So we certainly do have some breakouts that fail and potential reversals as well. Now, got to be careful, right? Got to be careful picking tops in a bull market like this. So this one very specific type of reversal pattern we'll talk about later on in the video. So uh, as you can see, I got a, we have a lot of options uh, to make money tomorrow, no matter what direction the market goes in. But if we drill down and get serious about the entry tactics for tomorrow, Tomorrow, though let's go let's go take a look here quickly at the schedule for tomorrow that way everybody knows kind of the schedule and what to expect there are three things that you want to be aware of here for tomorrow first of all it is the end of the month transition into a brand new month the end of the month into a brand new month is usually going to be more volatile than other times of the month right so end of the month into a new month expect volatility to kick up a bit second thing you want to keep in mind is new for tomorrow. Everything is pretty much piled in around that 10 o'clock top of the hour. The two big headline numbers for tomorrow, the two big catalysts that I'll be watching tomorrow in our trade room, certainly going to be the ISM manufacturing index. You always want to pay attention anytime you see the three letters ISM. Those are going to be big potential catalysts for tomorrow. And the jolts report, you know, that the Fed has told us many times over the past few announcements that they are watching the jobs market closely. We have a very big jobs report coming out on Friday, but that jolts report will certainly be on most traders' radar for tomorrow. They both come out at 10 o'clock Eastern time, so definitely make sure you're paying attention between 10 o'clock and 10.30 tomorrow morning. And then speaking of tomorrow morning, we go into another week of earnings. Now, P 
peak week is behind us. Last week was the vast majority of the biggest corporate earnings being released. We got a couple big ones here this week, specifically AMD after the close tomorrow. And just a, just a couple small companies there. You may have heard of Amazon and Apple before. Those trillion dollar market caps are coming out on Thursday afternoon. We'll talk a lot more about that as we get deeper into the week here this week. But looking at the numbers for tomorrow, before the open, you know, Uber and Pfizer are very well-known companies, but the hardest part of our job right now is there's no telling how the markets are going to react to all these earnings. So, you know, like always, we do our best to plan our trades the night before. This is definitely a big variable. This is definitely a big question mark for us tomorrow before the open. The most important thing, remember, about earnings, don't get down into the weeds. Don't worry about what the numbers come out as. Just be careful around the edges of the session before the open, into the close. Again, the biggest numbers coming out tomorrow night. We'll talk about the AMD earnings tomorrow in tomorrow night's video. So keep those on your radar, right? End of the month volatility, 10 o'clock ISM and jolts report. And again, again, how will the earnings, what will they be overnight? It's tough to tell tomorrow in the pre-market. So keep your eyes open and we'll be doing the same tomorrow in our trade room. Now back to our charts because the money is made on the charts. It's good to know when the news is coming out, but again, we're not gonna get down to the weeds and talk about what if it comes out higher or lower. That doesn't matter. News is noise, trade the chart. That's all that really matters. Okay, so now let's go with my favorite trades here for tomorrow. We'll start off with the S&P and the SPY. On the S&P and the SPY right now, 60 minute charts, pretty straightforward, right? Bull market right now into a trading range. Would love to buy the bear traps below that range. Gotta be careful, right? Got to be careful buying breakouts right now because of overhead resistance here. Okay, let's drill down now on the tick chart and let's talk about how to, how to structure the best entries and things I'm looking for for tomorrow. And remember, I like to use tick charts because tick charts make everything so much easier to find good entries. This is a 7,000 tick chart, all the time frames in the upper left-hand corner. And if you're watching here for the first time right now, that yellow line is the 21 EMA, the 21 exponential moving average, just in case you're watching for the first time right now. Now, there are three key insights sites on this chart that are tipping us off to how to structure the best trades for tomorrow. The first one is this bullish move going higher. The buyers have all the control over the momentum right now. So the easiest way to make money tomorrow will probably be on the buy side. Now, this is a trading range. Ranges act like magnets. That's my second thing. And the third thing is, is this major area of resistance, which we just talked about on the 60 minute. These are the three components that pretty much paint the picture of the easiest way to make money tomorrow. It's a bull market, a range is a magnet, and overhead resistance. Now put all these pieces together, and I think it's relatively easy to see, the easiest way to make money appears to be a breakout going lower. Because if I can buy off support, support, support off that trading range, I can use the range as a magnet and not have to worry about buying into overhead resistance. So as we go deeper into the video tonight, I do wanna talk about, we'll go into a lot of detail. There are three different entry patterns I'll be watching for that nice deep pullback. We're going to cover that a bit later on in the video. That's what I would love to get, right? That appears to be where the best, the easiest money is made for tomorrow. But we're pretty bullish right now. Let's talk about first, right, if we go higher. What's my challenge? It's not momentum. Momentum's great. Nice and bullish right now. My challenge, though, is range below me, resistance here above me. Okay, so knowing my challenge, knowing the problem that we have right now, there's a very simple game plan that I want you to think about. And these are called breakout pullbacks, okay? So now, imagine now as we break out, the top of that trading range, right? The top of that trading range becomes an area of support and we start looking for breakout pullbacks. That is the basic, the general idea of what the game plan is for tomorrow. We don't wanna buy as we're going into that overhead resistance, right? Wanna buy as low as we can. And oftentimes these trading ranges, they'll come right back and bounce right off of that high. So if you understand that 
basic idea behind it. Here are two setups I'll be watching for during this general move going higher. The first one is something you guys know very well already, something we teach a lot in my free trading classes. One of my favorite trades is a trap setup. So as we're going higher, the way that you buy without buying too high, buying into overhead resistance, is you buy with a very simple setup called the trap pattern. This would be a bear trap, if you will. Now watch how this pattern sets up here because it's very specific. I teach this in the free trading class, right? So strong move, shallow pullback to the moving average, 21 EMA, higher high in price, and a break right below that prior swing. Okay, so as we're going higher, if we go higher, this is the trap setup. This is the setup I'll be looking for as we make that initial run going higher. Trap patterns are my favorite setups to avoid buying too high. Strong move, shallow pullback, higher high in price, and nice strong, in this case, green signal candle, right, to signal the entry in that bull trap. That is the pattern you want to look for as we're going higher. And not to worry, I'm going to talk about the short here in a moment. Don't you worry. Now, we talked about the move going higher. Now, think about this breakout pullback now. Okay, this is where the magic happens. Once we run up into these areas of resistance, I don't want to buy high anymore. Now, everybody who bought low, they're taking profit. And this is where we start seeing deeper pullbacks. And this deep pullback will feel like a reversal. But again, we know usually what happens is it'll pull back in the top of that trading range. And this is where you can find what I call a failure pattern, right? You guys learn these in the free trading course. I'm going to look to get into support, again, at support, and try to trap those bears in below the moving average, right? Get those bears to sell short below the 21 EMA. And then think about this now. Where are their stops? Their stops are right above that high, and I can use their stops to fuel this move back up to retest that high, right? That is that breakout pullback scenario I just talked about, but now could have drilled down into some specific entry tactics, bear traps, and then again, seller failures off the top of that trading range. I teach both of these, as you guys know, in that free trading class, which reminds me, if you haven't taken that free course yet, if you're not making consistent money right now, these markets are way too good. You need to learn these entry tactics. I'll put a link up there for you in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that link. Take that free trading course because the strategy you'll learn in that video series on the website will show you a stupidly simple trick that we use every morning in our trade room to know exactly where the best winning trades are going to be each day. And most importantly, I'll teach you four of my favorite entry patterns to help kickstart you making money, things like traps, things like failures. If you're missing the best trades right now, if you're taking too many losses, don't delay. Grab that link that popped up there. Take that free course. There are a ton of examples of all the trap setups, all the deep pullbacks for failure patterns. I'll put all the links, by the way, too, in case you can't grab that pop-up. I'll put all the links in the description of the video, just in case you can't get your hands on that pop-up there in the upper right-hand corner. You're going to love that free course. Let me know how you like it, too. I'd love to hear your feedback uh, via email or comments uh, here below. Now, one more thing. Like I mentioned earlier, right, lots of resistance up overhead. And again, later on in the video, I'm going to talk about my favorite trades going lower. There are three different types of setups, right? Very different. Three setups I'm watching as we go lower here as well. But first of all, how would I short off the high here? How could I short off the high? What's the problem? Remember, there's always a problem. There's always a problem. There's no free lunch if you if th there's there's no such thing as a perfect or easy setup. You're always going to have a trade-off. For example, in my trade, when we talk about two things: momentum and location, right? If you can answer these two questions, you'll know what your problem is. And there's always always a problem. Okay? <laughs> there's no free lunch in trading. So if I want to sell short up here. What's my problem? Well, first of all, how is, how is location? Location's great, right? It's a great spot for, for a short, right? With resistance, above a range. It's a beautiful location for a short. But that's where the good stuff ends, right? Momentum. Momentum is not good. Why? Because if I want to sell short up here, right, it's very difficult to pick a top. For all I know, they're going to keep on going. 
right? Did you see last week, right? I mean, these markets are volatile right now. So I can't just simply sell into that high. I mean, not if I want to make consistent money, right? That'll blow right through a lot of those times, right? So momentum is the problem. But I can't pick the top on this, right? I'm not going to step in front of that freight train. So if we have a good area to short, but momentum is too bullish right now, this is where we're going to combine two patterns two patterns we talked about a moment ago, they are failures and traps, right? If, if failures and traps are a baby, right, they would create what's called a crown reversal. We talk a lot about these pattern setups. It's very, very simple here now. My job right now, if I want to sell off this high, is I need to trap in these buyers and use their stops, use their pain, right? Use their exits to fuel this move to turn around on me, right? Because again, we're all bullish. It's all bullish right now. So how do we do that? Well, uh, we always talk about this in the trade room. Buyers want to buy low, right? Buyers want to buy low and sellers want to sell high. So as we're pulling back, buyers are going to start buying into it, right? They're going to buy once. They're going to go lower. They're going to try to buy some more, right? Now, in comes the buyers now. If I can get a little bit above that prior swing, this is what you call a failure pattern with combined into a trap pattern. Okay, notice it, right? It's a failure. It's a it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a two try failure. It's a slight variation of the classic failure pattern I teach in the free trading course, right? And again, the reason why you want two tries is because we're so bullish. I have to give the buyers the benefit of the doubt, and the big reason why there needs to be a trap on here is because who's down here? Who's down here? Buyers, right? Buyers are going to come in and try to buy this thing right back up. I need to be in the money on that trade by the time we get down here, right? I do not want to sell low. I have to sell as high as I possibly can. And traps are the best way to sell high or the best way to buy low, as I mentioned earlier, as we go. I call these crown reversals. You could easily call this a two-try failure, to trap the buyers in, then with a bull trap, right? With a bull trap uh, at that high to allow me to buy, to, to sell, excuse me, as high as I possibly can. Because again, what will happen is, is as we pull back to that range high, I want to make sure I'm in the money on that trade because you know who is waiting down there and they may gobble this thing up and blast it running higher. And I don't want to walk right into a potential bear trap off the high. All right, guys? So now you know more about my kind of vision of how I'm going to look to trade this going higher. As we're going higher, it's what? It's bear traps. As we start making that big run higher, we don't we don't chase it. We don't chase it, right? We then wait for that deeper pullback. We start using prior swings. Prior swings get underneath that moving average, right? Trap those bears in and back up to retest the high. If we do end in this area, one try, two try, and that trap. And one more thing too, oftentimes this pattern can have different variations of it. So for example, we may V top off this, right? Let's say for example, this thing gets whacked right back down. That will be the same exact setup, just a little bit different look to it, right? Does that make sense, right? So sometimes what happens is it'll, it'll, get, it'll get smacked right back down off that high. We don't get, we don't get the beautiful one, to right that'd be the most desirable version of the pattern but if it gets knocked off of that high remember as we go lower buyers try once buyers want to buy low right so lower low in price buyers try again then bam right that will be a very very desirable short for those bears coming down where would my targets be on that by the way easy the other side of the trading range always right always use the opposite side of the trading range and then you got trend line, swing line, right? Those will be our big objectives from there. Now, would, is it possible we might go up, get shot right back down, and then end up buying it down here, right? Because again, this is, probably the, this is probably the most buyers are waiting down there. At support, below that trading range, that's a very good game plan for tomorrow. Why don't we grab some NASDAQ now? The NASDAQ is, a, it's, it looks a bit different, as you can see in the 60-minute chart, but it's very much the same basic game plan right now. The NASDAQ, I would say, is a little more two-sided, right? Probably not as full bullish as the S&P is right now. The NASDAQ's pretty simple, though. Had that strong run up, you know, back in, you know, middle, late, you know, you know mid-late July. The buyers are still trying to retest that high right now. There is one thing on the on the mind of the buyers in the NASDAQ right now, and that's to take out that 16.062. Anytime we 
see a strong move in one direction like that, it's only a matter of time. We've been saying this for weeks now. It's only a matter of time before they retest that high. The only question is, is when, right? It's, it, that, that's, that's all the question has been for the past two weeks um, on these videos. Now, knowing that is where the big buyer is, is the objective, as we say, short term, bullish into a trading range. So that part of, of the NASDAQ is very, very similar here now to the S&P. But you'll notice, right, lots of resistance overhead, resistance overhead, right? So we definitely have to be careful uh, on the NASDAQ as well. Let's now drill down now, right, to our, to our tick charts. And you're going to see this is almost identical. That's why I said before, it's a very straightforward game plan, a pretty easy game plan here for tomorrow. I'm not going to go back over all of the different scenarios again going higher, but you can pretty much copy and paste the entire thing I just talked about on the NAS, uh, from the S&P over the NASDAQ, right? There is that trading range, right? Three components were bullish range overhead resistance, right? So again, it's that breakout pullback scenario I just talked about. And the, the goal is very simple. The goal is, is to take out those big highs uh, up overhead. The NASDAQ, I would say the NASDAQ is probably one market that could easily get that jump up, right? A bit of FOMO and will probably be those bear traps might be the only option as we're going higher here, if we go higher right here for tomorrow. So definitely have that, definitely keep that on your, on your radar, that, that little bear trap as we go higher. Now, let's talk about some ways to buy this down here. Okay, because again, both the S&P and the NASDAQ, I mean, this is, if, 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 if you're a student of mine, you know, we love these scenarios, bull market, into a trading range, find support levels, find support levels, find support levels below the range, right, and buy off those support levels because ranges, they act like magnets. So here's, the, here's a scenario, uh, as we get that drop going lower, right? If we can get that nice big drop going lower, I want you to keep this one core pattern in your mind. It's a two try failure. And then we'll talk about some variations of it because we, we don't usually get the perfect, you know, the perfect example, right? So we'll talk about the basics and then we'll cover some variations of this. If I get that nice deep pullback right now, remember, think about this again, right? What is, what is the problem we have? It's a great location, right? Great location. But if we end up, if we end up, coming off that high, rolling all the way down. This will be a pretty bear market on a faster time frame. This is a 5,000 tick chart. We'll, drown, we'll, we'll, we'll drill down to a 1,000 tick chart tomorrow in our trade room. And if we get that big run going lower there, right, this will feel very bearish going lower. So in order to, in order to avoid uh, the problems we're trying to pick a bottom, I'm not a big believer in, in kind of picking the bottom on that because it's just, as you probably have learned, it's not that easy. It's not easy. You don't know how far it will go. So instead of, instead of picking the bottom on this, what I'd rather do is, is wait for these bears to come in and let them try a couple times, right? Let them dig their own grave. Let them wrap that rope right around their neck. And then once those bears are committed, then we know what they're up to. And now we can use their pain. Now we can use their stops as fuel. Uh, my first mentor, like like twenty almost twenty years ago now, he would always tell me, Joe, look for areas where everyone is a buyer. Okay, this is one of those scenarios. This is a very highly probable trade because in this scenario, if I can get bears trying twice and they get stopped out. The bears, the sellers are buying their way out, right? They have to buy their way out. At the same time, the buyers are certainly looking to buy low right now because it's a range market. It's a bull market. So these are those scenarios where everyone, everyone is a buyer, right? Very difficult to lose money in these types of trades. The bears get stopped out. They become buyers. Short squeeze. The buyers are buying because it's very low. Everyone's a buyer. So I like that scenario a lot. I would imagine there's probably a wall of buyers waiting there as we speak right now. Now, remember, these failure patterns, they oftentimes can trap some bears in pretty good, and the market will oftentimes snap and run higher. Remind me again, what is the one pattern setup that I want to use to avoid buying high? 
right? What is it? It's a trap. It's always a trap. It's always a trap. Now, why would I worry about buying high right there? Because hello, resistance, resistance, all of these areas overhead are resistance. I love the idea of buying off support with a two try failure. You guys, you know, it's probably a hundred examples of these inside the free trading class, right? But the challenge is now is that as we try to make our run going higher to take out these highs, that will definitely be where the buyers are trying to take it. I don't want to buy high. I want to buy as low as I can. So watch the follow-up entry with that trap set up. Remember, strong move, shallow pullback, higher high in price. And as we always say, traps, baby. If you're really good at this stuff, you'll start finding channels. Draw a channel off the high. Bring it up off that low and combine that, that trap entry with that new hidden channel drawn off the high. Mwah! That is a beautiful, beautiful add-on or re-entry. Or, you know, sometimes we don't get a good signal down here. It could be the only entry on the way back up, right? So that's, the, that's kind of the dream scenario we're looking for here as we go lower. But let's get real, right? Let's get real. We may not get that. So one variation we, we, we always talk about is, is a V bottom, right? Oftentimes, Mars will V bottom like, like, like that one did, right? What happens is, I, again, I want to get that deep pullback. I would love to get this perfect one, two, right, for tomorrow. But what if we don't, right? What if all we get is a V bottom, right? What if it rips lower? There's so many buyers down here and it simply pops right back up. Well, what's the problem? The problem is, again, I can't pick the bottom. They're very difficult to pick the bottom in these markets right now. And the other problem is, is that as it goes higher, what? I don't want to chase it, right? I don't want to chase it going higher. So what's the game plan? A trap. Always, right? Always V bottoms or traps, okay? These are the least desirable trade. I'll be very honest on that. But you can see what happens over here. Right, that's all they're doing. It runs lower, it V bottoms, and you can see it right there, right? These happen over and over and over again. It's a bear trap. So that same game plan, hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll get that nice two try failure, but if we don't, right, watch that trap set up, strong move, shallow pullback, higher high in price, traps maybe, right? Below that low. Okay, that's one variation that you want to think about as we go lower. And then also too, also too, you know, that's a pretty significant support level right there. I would love to get down in this area. But if all we get is a shallow pullback like this, right? Just be aware again, right? You got to go as low as you can and you want that trap entry. You know, for all I know, there could be so many buyers in the market right now, they don't even get well below that low, right? I'd love to get down here. We may, we, 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 we may not get it. Right, So if we don't get it and we start seeing these bears come in, try once, try twice, that trap low, you will see that signal candle. Right, That candle will close nice and strong, convincingly strong above the 21 EMA, and then bam, right, there's your signal going higher, targets at the other side of that trading range, targets at the amount below, the amount above, and definitely, right, definitely keep an eye on that one. The final variation I want to talk about is a double bottom. Okay, double bottom. Sometimes what happens is we roll lower, we pull back, the bears have all that momentum off the high, they come in, they whack it, and they retest that low. Okay, remember, anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we expect to pull back and a retest of that low. Now, when, when the sellers are taking their profit now at that low, in come the rookies, Okay, in my video classes, you'll learn about what we call entry counting. Once we retest the low, the entry count resets. Okay, what I mean by that is, is once they retest that low, now we start counting again. Bears come in, they try once. Bears come in, they try twice. That makes sense? Right? So if we do end up going lower, they pull back and they retest the low, now that retest resets the count, right? And keep in mind, right? It could go a little bit below that one as well. But once it retests that low though, now we reset the count and now we resume. Bears try once, bears try twice. Remember, buyers want to buy low, sellers want to what? Sell high, right? So as it goes higher, they sell once. They go higher high, they sell twice. Now we have the bears right where we want them, right? It's again, the scenario where everybody becomes a buyer once those bears get stopped out. That two try failure into that, right? Into that bear trap to make sure we buy as low as possible on the way higher. So it's a very similar variation to it, right? It's simply a double bottom. 
a lot of folks ask me over the years, you know, okay, so what does that mean if it retests that low? It means even better. It means even better because now the Bears, they've spent their bullets, right? Now, now they've shown us their cards and now the rookies come in. And that's usually one of the easiest ways to trap those Bears in. And again, back up into that range, back up to range highs. The amount below the trading range now projects above the range and gives some nice juicy targets here for tomorrow. All right, guys? So if there is a trading god watching this video right now, I will take this one, please, for tomorrow. That'd be my favorite trade for tomorrow, but you know they don't care about us, right? They don't care about us. And with the earnings tomorrow morning, you know they're going to throw us some curveballs, but that's exactly why we plan our trades ahead of time. And tomorrow morning in our trade room, we're going to trade our plan and we'll roll with the punches this time of the year, right? Summertime season, earnings season, big news for tomorrow i would be surprised if something doesn't surprise us tomorrow morning so tomorrow morning eight o'clock eastern time in our trade room you'll love being there with me trading along with us if you're not getting the results you want right now if you're missing too many good trades come out and learn with me i'm gonna trade with us in the morning trade room i'll put all the membership links i'll put all the important links the membership links the free class links everything you'll need to get more information to learn the basic strategy all linked up in the description of the video uh, here for tonight. Don't forget to, if you need help along the way, if you can't get into the video classes or you need help or questions, the easiest way to get help is just to call the office or use live, ch or, or use live chat. We're always here uh, to help out every step of the process. So don't be a stranger. Don't be shy. If you got questions, if you need help, definitely call us, uh, email, live chat. If you need help, we're here to help out. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching tonight. Thank you so much for sticking around all the way to the end. If you're still watching this, this video right now you are the person i do these videos for i put a lot of effort into these videos every evening so thank you so much for your commitment and i'll tell you right now if you are this committed to watching my free stuff you will do very well with us in our morning trade room so grab that link in the description um get get joined up i'll see you tomorrow morning or at least grab the free trading classes to learn the system and start trading better as always thanks for watching be well be nice out there tomorrow i will see you guys same time same place tomorrow all right adios amigos Bye-bye for now.